Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. This is DJ and I'll be your host for this week. It is Independence Day and I have the absolute pleasure of being joined by two gentlemen who need no introduction to cricket fans and cricket lovers. I have Amit Sinha and I have Joy Bhattacharya. Joy, that thank you so much for making the time to join us on this episode of Edges and Sledges. You're doing this from the airport, as we can see from the famous Delhi airport carpet behind you. So thanks again for making the time. Um, Amit, you've just recovered from COVID. So again, it's incredible to have you here. Thanks again. I hope you're feeling a lot better. But we are here to talk about the book that you have both co-authored. Joy, that, let me come to you first. Um, you've written a book about MS Dhoni. It's called Do Different, Dhoni, The Untold Story. Why did you pick MS Dhoni as a topic, first of all? I think there are two things. One is that he has a very storied career and all the books that have been written about him, uh, and there's some very good books, for example, Bharat Sundaresan's book, all of them told the story to a certain extent. And if you see his real fall after that was, you know, where he actually didn't qualify in the IPL and, you know, he had a terrible 2020 if you remember how it went. And then he came back. So there's a lot of the story that was still untold. And secondly, uh, I think it's important for us to know that, you see, Dhoni is such an enigma that we know only a certain part of him. And I said, can we know him better? And I said, not me, not Amit, not one person can't do it. So let's try and find him better by two ways. One is by actually analyzing his innings in detail enough. And Amit has done a sensational job of that. And the other is by just creating a situation where we have very different points of view. His first manager was somebody like Balaji who played with him before he was an India star or Deep Das Gupta who was a rival. So they give you perspectives about Dhoni because by alone they don't work, but together I think they give you a fascinating combination of perspectives. Incredible. And of course, I'm the MS Dhoni fan on this podcast. I've been a massive fan of Dhoni for, for years and years. So I've read, as you said, Bharat Sundaresan's book, The Dhoni Touch, which is a very, uh, it's a different take on how he, he went to visit uh, his hometown, went to visit his friends, got a lot of stories from there and things. So, so obviously read that and really enjoyed that. But Amit, I think Joyda has given us a bit of a flavor of, uh, of why this book is different because it talks about the lows of Dhoni because we remember the highs of Dhoni, the World Cups, the ICC trophies, the IPL wins. The first two words of the book title that you have is Do Different. Talk to me about why you chose those two words. Is it about MS Dhoni doing things differently? Is it about your book doing things differently? Or is it a combination of both? Yeah, just... Uh... A quick correction there, it doesn't de delve into the lows of Dhoni, it delves into the entire career of Dhoni and looks at him through multiple perspectives, okay? And uh, about do different, I think a couple of things there, of course, our subject is someone who used to do things differently, be it the long hair, be it the, you know, decision to give uh, Joginder Sharma the last over. But at the same time, for us also as, as authors and, you know, as Joyce has said, as you also mentioned that it's not that there haven't been books on Dhoni. There have been multiple books uh, giving a sense of, you know, about his career, about what he has achieved, about where he has come from. All right. Uh, and that's why what we had to do after there were all these books in the market already was do something different. And that's why what we realized was that Dhoni, the captain, is such a big uh, phenomena. Uh, not Sometimes it overshadows Dhoni, the batsman, right? But at the same time, you have to realize that the genesis of the Dhoni story begins from his batting exploits, you know, from, from those days in Nairobi when nobody was watching, but he was, you know, getting everyone's attention by what he was doing against the Pakistani attack, Pakistani attack and all. So even, you know, before that in 2004, in the other trophy and all of that. So I thought, okay, fine. Let's try to like pick 20 best innings of MS Dhoni. And it's just not, you know, description of his innings, but at different stages of the, his career, what those innings meant to him, right? Like what those winning innings meant for his career. So say we start, talk about the Wysag uh, ODI, right? In, in uh, 2005 against Pakistan. And uh, the story before that is that in the four matches before that, Dhoni has, fa has failed, right? He has made, I think, only 19 runs up till that point. And uh, again, uh, you know, that those three matches included like, you know, a series against Bangladesh. So how does he get that 
rope, long rope. So what is it that uh, a Saurav Ganguly see in him? And Saurav Ganguly himself, his career is sort of disintegrating at this point. But, you know, his trust in MS Zoni and uh, what he does with that trust and plays that blistering knock that we try to capture here. And again, that's just one part of it. Multiple knocks of his, be it something like uh, the knock against Australia in 2009, okay? He scored 124 and... Uh, now, this is a stage in is his career where he's no more just that swashbuckling batsman. He's also captain. But there was some, you know, uh, some uh, lack of balance between the two roles that we could see. You know, we could see that captaincy was probably affecting him and people were talking about it as well. So then there comes that knock where, you know, India 93 for 5 and uh, he comes out to bat, gets a blow on the head and then still goes on to three. And, you know, plays with that amount of responsibility and then in the final overs turns up in that, you know, the Buccaneer uh, Dhoni avatar that we know. So there we see that balance developing into Dhoni the captain, Dhoni the player. So that way, through these multiple knocks of his, we have tried to tell the Dhoni story in a different way. And that's why in my thought, in my opinion, it's, you know, the two different titles. Very interesting. Of course, you, you've mentioned you've looked at 20 of his innings. Joyda, there must be a favourite innings of yours amongst those 20. I know it's hard to pick. As a Dhoni fan, when you said 124, I think of, yes, but I think of Chennai where he gets that double hundred against Australia when the chips are down and he takes Nathan Lyon apart, saves, I think, his captaincy after those eight test match defeats overseas as well. But Joyda, is there is there a favourite innings out of these 20? that uh, you would pick as your favourite MS Dhoni innings without wanting to cause too much controversy. I think you're still on mute, Joyda. Yeah, my apologies. The, the one that uh, impacted me the most, I will still, you know, I thought a lot about it. I'll still go with Vizak in Pakistan. Because, you know, he's not supposed to bat up the order. He's had repeated failures. This is perhaps his last chance to make it. He bats up the order. And he absolutely flays them. See, for a guy who's that close to getting dropped, to have the confidence that he does and how his confidence grows through that is almost a microcosm of his career. You know, and I, I, I still regard that as my favorite. Very interesting. And Amit, I remember, I remember reading the scroll excerpt of the, the Pakistan innings, the 148, I think, that he got against Shoaib Akhtar, Breathing Fire. I think it's a fascinating ex excerpt and we'll put a link in the show notes as well. Because it took me back to that time where Irfan Pathan and Dhoni are batting together. There's sledging going on. You're about to get into a follow-on and it literally like brought the goosebumps back. But do you have a favourite innings out of the out of the 20 that you've, you've looked at? Or are they all equally uh, loved? Yeah, I mean, honestly, after writing about them and after you know diving so deep into them it's it's like I have seen Dhoni in so many different avatars through that innings that it becomes slightly difficult but again for me as I keep saying that uh, as an 18 year old to have my country's captain playing that knock in the World Cup final I think that's a terrific terrific experience I mean the memories that it left me with they will always be special. And uh, yeah, 91 not out against Sri Lanka 2011, uh, 2nd April. Can't ever forget that. I was and also just because of the fact that, you know, throughout that tournament, his form was quite uh, bad. I mean, he had just one half century against his name. Uh, but at the same time, he had that self-belief that, okay, this is the opportunity. This is uh, Murli Dharan is bowling. I have faced him in the nets a lot in uh, Chennai. And uh, yeah, he had that belief to come out and do that. Uh, inform batsman Yuvraj Singh still in the uh, dressing room. So a lot of factors make that knock quite incredible. And, you know, doing that. I mean, one thing that if you read about in the book, uh, we also see how Dhoni had a knack for picking opportunities, right? Like be it uh, the, uh, the knock of uh, 148 against Pakistan that Joyce you talked about. It's not that that Pakistan team is the greatest or anything, right? But it's against Pakistan. And the kind of knock that he plays, I mean, even 183 against Sri Lanka doesn't get talked about like, like that. So Dhoni always had that knack of putting up those kind of innings where, you know, it would come, uh, come, come across as something bigger than it was. Even for the 76 not out against England, you know, in the same test match, 
uh, Dinesh Karthik had a good uh, good knock as well. And at that point, they were both, you know, competitors, right? So, but then Dhoni plays this knock at Lords 2007 and saves India a test match. 153 balls, not a lot of people would have expected him to last that long uh, against the, you know, likes of James Anderson and Ryan Sidebottom. But he did. So, so he picked a lot of the, these occasions, rose to the occasion and... Of course, the biggest of them is the big night of 2nd April 2011. Very interesting. Joyda, um, of course, Dhoni retired from um, Test Cricket in 2014, handing the reins over to Virat Kohli. We've talked f- about a few of his Test knocks already. Do you think he did justice to his uh, his talent as a Test batter? Uh, he ended with an average of, I think, 38.9 or something like that. But um, could he have gone on a bit longer or... Was it time for him to retire? You think as a as a batsman because he gave up the captaincy as well. Oh, on mute again, Joyda. It's okay. <laughs> uh, for me, Dhoni, I think was took on the test reins because she really believed that India needed him. I don't think he enjoyed the test match as a format. The way I think Dhoni is easily the best one day T Twenty captain. I've ever seen by a far, far margin. But he was not a natural test player. And I think he took on that role because he felt that at that point in time, India needed someone to take the role after Kumble went and needed that stability. And he gave them that stability and he did it. And the day he realized that, okay, now Virat Kohli is probably up to it now, he walks away from it. I genuinely believe that his keeping would have kept him there. I don't think he enjoyed uh, captaining the test format the way he enjoyed, say, captaining the ODI in the T20 format. So I think he took it as a responsibility to India rather than something that he really enjoyed himself. Very interesting. And of course, he um, he handed over the race uh, in 2014. Uh, Sorry, go on. So, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks so much. I better go for my flight and thanks for having me on. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you, Joyla. Have a safe flight and I'll just carry on with Amit. Thank you again. Thank you. Amit, I was going to ask, actually, we, we mentioned Dhoni, the test batter. We've mentioned Dhoni, the um, ODI great, I would say, for India as well. We've mentioned Dhoni, the captain. What about Dhoni, the T20 batsman? Because he's got an IPL record, which is which is very impressive. He's played a lot of knocks in the IPL. I don't know whether you've you've mentioned in your book the one in which he punches himself after hitting uh, the winning runs the... as well, which is an iconic moment in IPL history. And all the CSK fans right now are are uh, enjoying listening to this. But what about Dhoni, the T20 batsman for India? Do you think he did, again, did, did he have any special knocks that you've uh, you've covered in your book on, on the India side for T20? No, definitely. I mean, uh, that's one aspect of Dhoni's batting where we, of course, all feel that uh, much more was expected of him. And uh, he, again, I think it was, it was the role, uh, the captaincy somehow, and coming down at number six and all, somehow it never allowed him to blossom into that player. But at the same time, if you look at it, uh, some of the best knocks that have, you know, uh, say Yuvraj Singh's knock against Pakistan in 2012. And again, same uh, against uh, Australia. Both were 70 odd. There were several such knocks where you will find Dhoni at uh, the other end, right? Like doing the, uh, playing the supporting act. So, of course, he was not at his blistering best in the T20i format for India. But, uh, yeah, contributed a lot with the uh, with his captaincy. And there were several knocks, uh, one of which I, you know, I uh, talk about a lot because I think it's one of the most underrated knocks by him in the T20 format is the one he played against uh, South Africa in the first T20i World Cup. It was a knock of 45 against uh, South Africa. And, I mean, you've watched that match and I remember watching that match and it was quite a bouncy Durban pitch. And, of course, at that point, did not have the capability that, like, I mean, the that bounce was something else, right? It was not the easiest pitches to bat on. Of course, Rohit Sharma would come out and play his first knock and hit 54 there. But otherwise, it was quite a difficult pitch. And uh, out there, Dhoni did a did an incredible job. We needed to win that match. And South Africa, of course, choked. So, yeah, there were a few knocks here and there. Otherwise, I would say, yes, there were. I mean, Dhoni, the T20I batsman, left a lot to be desired. You are on mute, DJ. <laughs> everyone, everyone, uh, still two years into the pandemic, still on mute. Um, 
Well, I was going to ask you actually is, of course, we remember all the games that Dhoni won. Um, mm. And you've gone through, I, I think, hundreds of his innings to pick the ones that you, you thought were the best. But th- I think there came a point in his in his career. And I, I can clearly remember where I think that started. And I think it yeah. was an OD, ODI against South Africa with Rabada bowling at him. When we needed eight to get, I think of the eight or nine to get off the last over, and Dhoni of old would have just because he would have just won that game in his sleep. I even remember the tri series final where he batted with Ishan Sharma for what seemed like thirty overs with one right. wicket standing, and he, he he crept along to take it to seventeen, I think, of the last over, and he just tore into the Sri Lankan uh, team, and we won by two balls left. But where did that decline of ms dhoni as a as a batter start i mean of course everybody gets old this reflexes the hand eye coordination they all slow down but is that the point in time you you start seeing his his returns decline do you think i think again uh, a lot of it you know if you if you look at it that way it has also got to do with the reputation of ms dhoni because by that point by 2013 if there was a tight situation, we knew that Dhoni would pull us along, right? And by that time, it came to a point where if Dhoni did not win us a match, it was quite difficult to believe. And even before that, if you remember, uh, there was a T20I, which was uh, the comeback of Yuvraj Singh. And Yuvraj Singh played quite well for his 34 or 37. But, uh, you know, I think it was Dhoni at the other end and we could not finish that match. We lost by three runs or something. I think just a year before that. So, yeah. There were several such occasions post-2013 where that finishing touch did not come. But it, I, I would say that, you know, for a player who did that on so many occasions, it was just our expectations also where we thought, okay, this, this guy can do it, right? And when that did not happen, we were like, no, this is there is something wrong in the universe that Dhoni cannot do it. But uh, talking about s- slow reflexes, the next match itself, he played, you know, in Indore. He scored 92 and, uh, of course, uh, got India to a famous win. But most importantly, last over was bowled by Dale Steen. And he was at his best. I think he scored 20 runs from that last over. So, of course, the the reflexes, of course, slow down and all. But it also had a lot to do with our expectations of Dhoni because of how we saw him in his prime, right? From 2005 onwards, we just thought that this guy can take us to any possible win and even even in 2000 uh, 2007 you know uh, right for uh, the world cup india played a series against sri lanka and even there there was a match where nine runs were required of the last over sanaj surya was bowling and uh, we couldn't win it so it's very natural for anyone to, who has such a long career to go through these you know matches where they it doesn't come off but i do not think that uh, pointing at that match would be the right way to say that, okay, this is where his decline started. Because as a contributor to the one-day team, he was still quite, you know, one of the best. But yeah, he was not finishing the matches the way we had expected him to because we had seen so much of that before that. And now I have to ask you the question. 2019 semi-final. <laughs> right? <laughs> So we've had a huge, I, I almost said, I want to say debate, but I think Ashwin and I almost had a fight about this. Because <laughs> Ashwin insisted that when we were like two wickets down, MS Dhoni should have walked in at number four. Right? And I said, well, if MS Dhoni got out then, you would have, yeah, you would have just keeled over. Like the, the fight would have gone out. You would have Hardik Pandya and Brishap Pant and all these guys coming in later. So the idea of holding Dhoni back was... A good one. Ashwin said, no, he should have taken the responsibility and and the whole talk before the World Cup was that he should have batted at four. So, um, I know Ashwin's going to listen to this. I want to hear your view on this and then I'll ask you one more question on on around this t- kind of topic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, uh, of course, that must have been the team's decision. So, I'm not too sure coming up the order was something. But I agree with the view on this that if at that point Dhoni had come out and the team had lost another wicket is my video lagging a little bit yeah little all bit. right is that causing a problem no, in the okay. audio it's okay, it's okay. yeah don't worry cool Fine. so yeah going back to it uh, i think uh, the decision was definitely right to hold him back uh, but at the same time you know 
again these are tricky decisions can go your way can not go your way the shots the that pant and pandya played not the greatest quality that put a lot of pressure on the team uh, but at the same time yeah i think if he he would have paced that in slightly better we would have been in with a better chance towards the end and uh, whether we he would have you know like a, a lot of people say that in his mind the calculations were done last over jaminisham 17 runs medium pace he can definitely do it but that is the thing about self belief right for i mean these are individuals these are sportsmen sportsmen are people built on self belief and i mean if it was not for self belief this guy from rachi would not have reached here right so dhoni is the epitome of that self belief that i will do it okay no matter what may come i can do it but at the same time you have to realize that okay after a point of time age does catch up with you and maybe uh, that self belief became the double edged sword for dhoni where uh, you know he still could not come to terms with the fact that he was not being able to finish the matches the way he would have liked to and uh, somehow that's where things did you know but at the same time again you can always uh, talk about scenarios scenarios in your head uh, he did hit lucky ferguson for a six in the on the first ball so again the all conversations about his reflexes slowing down not too sure if it makes sense but uh, yeah i think uh, the decision was right to hold him back he could have paced his inning better uh, you know at one point it seemed that ravindra jadeja was taking all the risks and maybe if there was some more support from him uh, uh, it would have been a different scenario but you know the ifs and buts of that world cup match keep going on and on yeah it's it's uh, hindsight is 2020 right and it took a freak throw from the outfield by uh, martin guptill to hit the stumps direct and yeah, he was caught exactly. a couple of so a lot of these right? things yes a lot of these things i mean and and i think that's where i think the uh, you know the one aspect of dhoni i have always admired and i'm sorry to say talk about it when you haven't even asked but you know the ability to divorce yourself from the result it's for someone who has played for so long and uh, been in so many crucial matches so many finals and everything uh, that's something you have to like dhoni i think was quite good at accepting things instead of taking it taking that uh, defeat to heart or something so so yeah that's something that uh, dhoni has been quite uh, inspirational for me in that way and uh, as as a country i think we have to come to terms with that we have to learn that okay we are not going to win everything there will be good days there will be bad days you have to treat both the defeat as well as the win you know as the same uh, imposter as the poem says the rudyard rudyard kipling poem if says so yeah and the the last question i have for this is and this is quite interesting because um dhoni gets a lot of flack for hmm. being there at the end having scored 40 50 60 not out he gets a lot of flack for it right i always find that amusing now now we are including some of my co podcasters are now justifying people who score runs in a losing cause as being the ones who scored the runs but when it came to ms you were like we lost the match and he was still there how can this happen so i genuinely like i actually believe that he's a victim of his own success if you look at that game he was he was a top scorer i assume in that game i i, I haven't looked at that score card cuz there's still jadeja was from, the top scorer he was oh yeah jadeja uh, got seven. 70 or right uh, but he's got the runs so instead of yes. pinning the blame on the guys who didn't get the runs he's got the runs and so i think there was a lot of that with ms which we are now maybe as a nation we're growing like when ashreya sayer scores runs in a in a losing match we're like we're okay with that or like rohit sharma scores runs in a losing <laughs> match we're fine with that instead of pinning the blame on him saying he should have scored more he should have finished the game all of that stuff so i think top order batsmen as a rule generally get away with more unless it's a stark like 5 for 3 or 25 for 4 type of situation where it's like it's very clear that the top order has failed no i think i agree with you and that's that's not just with this match that is the case with dhoni's career where a lot i mean the the peak dhoni that we witnessed was something else we had not witnessed something like that you know i i write about it how he was called the naya sehwag at the beginning right but he was still a level ahead with the kind of hitting that he was going to do and 
and not just the kind of hitting the maturity that he showed while doing that it was something different and that translated into a captaincy uh, tenure that was quite fruitful in its first 5 6 years and uh, yeah after I, that i'd say the most successful tenure in the history of indian captaincy by far by far surely i mean yeah every trophy so, plus the the uh, test match number 1 for in that period between 2007 and 2013 right like right so exactly so after that what happened and you know again i'm not saying this because i wrote a book on dhoni so i have to defend him a lot or anything so i'm I mean... i'm loving this i'm loving <laughs> this this is like i wish we started the podcast when dhoni was at his peak can you imagine that i we started in 2018 when he was on his way down but dhoni so, at his peak would have been something else to talk right, about right exactly and that is that's what i'm saying that a lot of criticism that dhoni gets is because of what he achieved as a cricketer in his peak and he got his team to achieve as as a team you know with in all those 6 years and uh, those series wins like now we do not really care about whether we defeat australia 4-0 or you know whatever at home but yeah it, it those things meant and coming back after that 2-1 loss to england all those things things meant really uh, immensely but again we had such high expectations from ms dhoni always and uh, yeah that's that's where we sort of sort of let him down i would say but again i think uh, 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 as a player he also has been around for a long time so he has learned it very well to how to let things slide so so yeah i don't think he gets bothered a lot by whatever gets talked about in the media about reflexes about uh, not being able to finish well and all of it but at the same time i think the the conversations that happen in the media the conversations that we are you know having right now they are largely because of how influential he was as a cricketer on indian cricket in a certain period of time of course every player you know and we now have the benefit of perspective to look look back and say okay from 2014 probably he was not at his best right but how does a player who has been so good uh, come to terms with that it takes time and you are not it's not that you are not contributing to the team you are a major uh, component of the team uh, still when virat was became the odi captain dhoni was still pretty much behind the scenes so uh, for a cricketer it is difficult to come to terms with the fact that okay maybe the best is over and even a lot of people when their best is over they are empty but dhoni still had so much to offer to the team and that's why he continued for a very long time when a lot of people felt that maybe he's you know like a, prolonging his career for no good reason so so yeah i think a lot of what we feel about dhoni is because how we saw him from 2005 to 2013 and uh, we just like from 2014 onwards it was not that great and we always had those expectations from him and sometimes you know we we begin to like not get the right perspective when it comes to ms let, let me put it this way we didn't put the television off while dhoni was batting right never we Tony never Henry. exactly abhi bhi matlab we beat ipl 2022 we were all watching it jaydev unadkar man like you know gets wickets by bucket full for uh, vidarbha and uh, still a good bowler at the death and he's taken off for cleaners so and i'm not saying that he would do it in every match of course he would not but that is the kind of expectation i remember in the next match also a similar situation arose and people were like are dhoni hai to kar dega but no it is at the end of the day a man he is a human being and it is not going to come off every day but the number of occasions on which it has come off it is incredible Remarkable. it's only if we yeah it's 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 just that yeah we'd be like get a little lost in the entire length of his career i like nahi yaar uske baad to nahi chala na but aisa nahi hota hai <laughs> well, i could i could genuinely sit here and talk to you for 2 hours about ms dhoni because we could go through his entire career but you've already done that in your book right and of course uh, we'll we'll come to talking where they people can buy your book and all of that stuff but you are on twitter amit are the random cricket photos guy and on instagram right if you had to pick one photo one still from ms dhoni career i know you picked one for your book i think that's a very safe choice but if you had to pick pick one moment and i'm okay people i know 
post that picture of him leaving the ball outside of stump in the semi final which is <laughs> frankly ridiculous or the one about him about him getting run out in the semi final so that is not allowed those two are not allowed but one photo and of course the iconic one for me would be him hitting that six at the one kade and i don't know yeah, whether it's different for you but that's the one that i would post if if i'm thinking of ms dhoni Uh, yeah that's turn. one of course that's one there is another photo again look i mean my uh, my endeavor is always to go into the little known stories little known photos and there is a photo which i i have uh, talked about it on my youtube channel as well and it is dhoni playing the helicopter shot and i haven't seen a better photo of dhoni playing the helicopter shot this is quite early in his career when he was still using that rbk bat you know so so uh, for me that photo because of how weird it looks like you, you know if if you introduce someone to cricket and say okay this is a shot that cricketers play that person would not want to believe because it looks so weird right but at the same time that is what he did he made the weird the normal you know with his his technique was very ugly to look at while he was batting but he made us fall in love with his batting over the 15 years he played for india so that one photo uh, i really like because it i mean it's the best of his helicopter shot captured in a photograph and uh, and as i said that it symbolizes what dhoni did to cricket he made the exception the norm people i mean people today so many people are trying to play the helicopter shot which actually you know a lot of people say yeah azruddin used to play something like that then nulkar has played on several occasions but dhoni brought that shot made his own and it is quite incredible so so yeah if if uh, people are listening to this my uh, youtube channel is called random cricket photos and uh, out there there is a photo of ms dhoni I, i have talked about that particular photo and why i think it is one of the more influential photos for me of ms dhoni again not a very popular photo quite possible you might not have seen it but uh, for me it is what dhoni you know with his long hair with his very ugly looking helicopter shot but definitely effective definitely getting the team the runs that was required so so yeah that one photo i think is uh, one of my favorites awesome and amit where can people buy the book tell us where they can buy Surely, the book sure you can definitely buy the book. you can go to amazon and uh, look for do different and at the same time you can uh, go to your nearest bookstore if you are in india most of our bookstores have the book and uh, so yeah uh, buy it from there and uh, if you can i'll send you the link you can add that to the description of the video and people can buy that uh, book absolutely and i look forward to getting my uh, autographed copy from you guys but hum sab pal do pal ke rahi hai so our time is now up at uh, 1929 hours you can consider <laughs> us retired but amit we thank can't you for joining be, us we can't be half as cool as dhoni trust that me was, that is do you think that he is made for that sure video himself it seemed like he made the video possibly himself. possibly <laughs> yeah yeah possibly that's what, like you know i think i mean we get too much into the you know the details of the story but yeah what a cool guy and we will realize it several years down the line trust me like the kind of impact that man has had on india's cricketing destiny it's quite incredible and of course we had sachin tendulkar before that and then virat kohli also came onto the scene but for us to have a cricketer who was so different he was not different just because you know he could play those helicopter shots and all of that but also from where he comes you know rachi is a place and and that self belief is mind blowing like for someone who is playing for bihar opening the batting for bihar doesn't even get noticed anywhere he got a chance because you know i think i i wrote a one long thread that in 2004 india visited uh, kenya to play a tri series against nairobi oh sorry uh, kenya and pakistan a and just before that series dinesh karthik who was part of you know that touring party he had been called up from bef- before that series india was playing zimbabwe select 11 and uh, he got called up from there to play in amsterdam where india was playing australia and pakistan in a tri series so karthik got one match in the entire two matches one in champions trophy later that year and one of course the debut he played against in the natwest challenge in uh, against england uh, he got those two matches ms dhoni got his chances here in kenya and he made the world 
sit down and notice and you you know even those innings the way uh, the likes of atul wasan javagal shrinath savakarima talking about him they know that there is something special about this cricketer so yeah to come from bihar to come from uh, you know a, like not not a lot of people are even looking at the scorecards of you know who is playing for bihar and all but he has created that sort of an impact to come from there to lead team india to lead team india to victories i think it's going to take a lot of years for us to understand the you know huge amount of impact that dhoni left behind as a cricketer yeah absolutely and just on that uh, we have have a question from ko kartik who asks do you think ms will stay connected with the game after his uh, his ipl stint finishes will he do coaching commentary do you, what do you, what do you think i would not like to you know try and guess dhoni because i would make fool out of myself <laughs> because i have a lot of Real people jogender sharma at you in the last yeah over. exactly but my <laughs> thing is my sense is that and you know i say it because i keep looking at dhoni as the guy who came from rachi who broke into a team full of superstars and then went on to lead it to a world cup win which in itself is quite a story so for me dhoni is a very important character when it comes to grooming young cricketers who are you know who can get uh, straight uh, you know carried away by the riches of the ipl and all so i would love to see him work with the nca that's where he's definitely not the guy to go to uh, technique for right but at the same time he's just the perfect guy to lead you to guide you and to get you prepared for what is coming uh, you know for you at the international level so i do not know what ms dhoni will do but if you were to ask me what i would like to see him do it would be definitely get involved with young indian cricketers a lot of young talent and this has happened while dhoni was captain also we saw that so much young talent from ipl they would they would not be able to translate that into you know a career at the highest level something somewhere that does go wrong for some of them maybe that's where a figure like ms dhoni who is of course greatly respected for what he brings to the table and does have all sorts of experience to uh, help young pe- people so so yeah nca is where i would love to see him incredible amit again thank you so much for your time guys go and buy the book do different ms dhoni the untold story as always you can follow us on twitter facebook and instagram we'll put amit and joyda's coordinates as well in the show notes but yeah write in rate and review amit go on, you got something to add yeah just one last thing i think uh, you know we when we talk of ms dhoni and we talk of all the numbers and that's why there is a piece that i write about ms dhoni as a fan and i mean again you can talk about the numbers you can talk about uh, the analysis the trophies but what a cricketer leaves behind is the impact on you know on a generation and that's where i would like to you know bring one name to your notice it's uh, someone who follows your podcast very religiously and someone who's a very close friend of mine uh, his name is arjun walia and arjun back when when we were playing cricket when i was like what 13 14 the days when ms dhoni was the big thing right arjun was the ms dhoni of our colony right and uh, that's the thing you know to come into cricket and in a year everyone is like it's not about who is the sehwag of this group who is the tendulkar of this group yahan par dhoni kaun hai and that is the impact of ms dhoni just one year into cricket he had that sort of impact and uh, yeah i mean arjun was a big fan of ms dhoni played like him unconventional and i had a terrible time bowling to him but whenever i got his wicket i used to celebrate like a madman but uh, yeah arjun is a big fan of this podcast he listens to it every time and uh, yeah just wanted to uh, tell the world through arjun story that this is the kind of impact that ms dhoni has had in every group in every gully there was someone who wanted to be like ms dhoni who and you know there is so much to learn from the story of ms dhoni whether you are a 15 year old guy or 29 year old like me amazing arjun thank you for listening to the podcast and thank you for keeping the uh, ms dhoni flame alive i i can't wait to actually play cricket with you one day uh, how is his helicopter shot 
<laughs> Arjun can play anything. I mean, honestly, I have been at the receiving end of a number of shots, and yeah, I used to bowl my poor off spinners, and uh, oh yeah, yeah. got hit like oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, just off spin against MS was uh, was always definitely not goal, the right? best answer. Murli and Nathan, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, that is the show. Thank you again for joining us, and yeah, we will see you next week where we'll be talking more about the Asia Cup. Amit, thanks. Take care, and hope you feel a lot better soon. Thanks again. Thank you, DJ. Love talking to you.